Hello everyone. My name is Nilata Rao and I'm a PhD student and a PMRF fellow at the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering, IIT Kanpur. Today we will continue with the next lecture of the chapter Cell, the Unit of Life. So in this lecture, we will see what a eukaryotic cell is and what are the components of eukaryotic cells. Okay. So if you remember in the last lecture or till now what we have discussed, we discussed that cells are of two types. So cells are of two types and this division is based on the type of nucleus it has. Okay. Based on type of nucleus it has. Okay. So what are these two types of the cells? The first one is prokaryotic cell. The first one is prokaryotic cell and we saw in detail what a prokaryotic cell is and what are the components of a prokaryotic cell. Now the second type of cell is eukaryotic cell. The second type is eukaryotic cell. So if we break the term eukaryotic, it comprises of two terms, right? U. So the U term U means true. Okay. So, so the term U means true and karyotic is derived from the word karyons. Karyotic is derived from karyons, which means nucleus. So what is a eukaryotic cell? It is a cell that has true nucleus. Now, what do you mean by a true nucleus? So it means it has well defined, a eukaryotic cell has well defined and membrane bound nucleus. Okay. It has well defined and membrane bound nucleus. Okay. Now second thing, a eukaryotic cell is said to be extensively said to have extensive compartment compartmentalization. Okay, so it is said to have extensive, exten, it said to have extensive compartmentalization. So now, what do you mean by compart compartmentalization? So if you remember, I told in the first lecture that a cell looks something like this. Okay, it has an outer boundary that is called plasma membrane or cell membrane, right? So the outer boundary is called plasma or cell membrane. And based on different type of cells, the cells can also exhibit other outer boundaries such as cell walls, cell envelope, as we saw in the case of prokaryotic cells. But this plasma membrane or cell membrane is present in all kinds of cells, right? Now, next, if you remember, we had a semi-fluid matrix that was cytoplasm. Apart from this, we had genetic material. But there were also various subcompartments, right? There were various subcompartments inside a cell. And these subcompartments were of different types. Okay. So there were various subcompartments. So these were the subcompartments. And these subcompartments were also of different types. Some had membrane outside it. Either it can be a single membrane or double membrane or did not have any membrane at all. Right. So these subcompartments, these were what they were called? They were called organelles. Okay. And a eukaryotic cell have a, a large number of these organelles, unlike prokaryotic cells, which has only one organelle, right? Prokaryotic cell has only one organelle, and that was also not membrane bound. So because of this reason, a prokaryotic cell is known to have extensive compartmentalization. So if someone asks, it is because of presence of many organelles, okay? Because of presence of many organelles or sub, sub compartments. And because of this, a eukaryotic cell is called to have extensive compartmentalization. Now, if we talk about the size of a eukaryotic cell, the size is generally larger than prokaryote, okay? So its size is generally larger then prokaryotic cells okay and what is the size range the size range is of 10 to 20 micrometer okay so the general size range is of 10 to 20 micrometer now if you talk 
And if you say that whether all the eukaryotic cells are of same type, the answer is no. So the eukaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells are of different types. Okay. Are of different types. And what types it can have? The eukaryotic cells range from protista. So this thing you will study in kingdom classification. So it can be a protista. It can be fungi, it can be plant, and it can also be animal. Okay. So these are the different kind of eukaryotic cells. While if you remember in the prokaryotic cells, you majorly studied about bacteria. So eukaryotic cell has only one kingdom bacteria. While in the case, sorry, prokaryotic cell has only one kingdom bacteria, while the eukaryotic cells can be of different types from that can be protista, fungi, plant, or any. Okay. And these things you will study in detail in the kingdom classification chapter. But for now, let's see or let's study the different components of a two typical eukaryotic cell. The first one is the plant cell. Okay. So the first one is the plant cell. So this is plant cell. And the second is animal cell okay both of these are eukaryotic cells now we will see what are the differences and common components that are present in these two type of cells so in a plant cell if you see this is cell wall so the outer boundary is cell wall the inner boundary what is this this is cell membrane or plasma membrane okay now if you go inside what is this called this is the an organelle that is not membrane bound and this is called peroxisome. If you go in more details, this is the another organelle that is called Golgi apparatus. Okay, this is called Golgi apparatus. Now, if you see, there is another organelle and this organelle is called chloroplast. This organelle is called chloroplast. Now let's move further inside. So what is this organelle? This tiny organelles. These are the ribosomes. Okay. These are the ribosomes. So then the next one is mitochondria. The next one is mitochondria. So it has this inside this rough structure and this is called mitochondria, which is also known as powerhouse of the cell. Now, from apart from mitochondria, what it has, it has a large vacuole. This structure, this large structure is called vacuole. Okay, that is characteristic of a plant cell. Now, apart from vacuoles, what other things it has? It has this, it has this structure, which is single membrane bound, and this is called lysosome. Okay, now apart from lysosomes, what other things it has? You can see this structure, these structures. On these structures, there are small things attached to it. And this is called rough endoplasmic reticulum. These structures are called rough endoplasmic reticulum. Why they, these are called rough endoplasmic reticulum? Because these structures have ribosomes attached on it. Okay. Now, we also have smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, plant also has smooth endoplasmic reticulums. And these are called smooth because they do not have ribosome attached on them. Okay. Next, let's go and talk about nucleus. So in the nucleus, this outer layer is called nuclear envelope. So a eukaryotic cell have a well-defined nuclear envelope, right? Or nuclear membrane. So this outer layer is called nuclear envelope. This layer, this thing is called nucleus. So the nuclear envelope surrounds the nucleus. And this inside structure is called nucleosome. Okay. So these are the components of a plant cell. Apart from this, uh, it also have another structure, which is not mentioned in the, this figure, but this structure is called plastid. And this plastid is actually a colored structure. Okay. So generally, if you see a cell in a microscope, you will see a black and white image. Okay, but these plastids, these plastids are 
color because they consist of certain pigments and these are also the characteristic feature of a plant cell okay so we saw that what are the component that are plant present in a plant cell now we'll talk about the animal cells what do we have in the animal cells so in animal cells we can see a outer projections right these outer projections so these outer projections are called microvilli okay we will come and uh, we'll study in detail about these structures but these outer projections are called microvilli now the plants animal cells do not have cell wall okay so they do not have cell wall their outer structure is called plasma membrane or cell membrane so their outer structure is called plasma membrane or cell membrane next these have another structure that is called lysosome similar to the plant cell they also have mitochondria okay they also have mitochondria one thing that is different in animal cell as compared to plant cell is the uh, this structure this structure and this structure is called centrioles so this centrioles help in cell division okay this centrioles help in cell division and they are characteristic feature of a plant cell apart from this these have all the organelles similar to that of what we studied in the case of plant cells such as it has this golgi apparatus this they have this rough uh, smooth and deplasmic reticulum and other component that are common in animal cell uh, plant cells right so if we see we can say that there are many organelles that are common in plant and animal cells but what is different in plant and animal cell so difference in plant and animal cells are in case of plant cell what a plant cell have in addition so a plant cell have cell wall right so plant cell have cell wall that is not present in an animal cell apart from this a plant cell have vacuole a large vacuole that is characteristic feature of a plant cell and plastids and one more thing that is chloroplast so these are the organelles that are not present in animal cell but are present in plant cell if you talk about animal cell what do we have extra in animal cells we have one structure called centrioles right so the centrioles are the structure that is present in the animal cells and are responsible for cell division and these structures are not present in plant cells okay so we have seen what are the components of a typical plant cell and animal cell both of which are eukaryotic cells now before moving forward let's know about certain terms so if you have a cell right a cell consists of all the components that we just discussed right now if you remove cell wall from it if you remove cell wall from a cell this structure or the remaining component is known as protoplast okay the rem remaining component is known as protoplast so a cell without a cell wall is called protoplast now from the proto protoplast if you remove all the non living components so this minus sign means remove okay if you rem remove non living components if you remove non living components the next structure and next component will be called protoplasm so the structure will be called protoplasm so what is protoplasm it is living living component of a cell protoplasm is living component of a cell okay now from the protoplasm if you remove the nucleus okay if you remove the nucleus then what you will be left with you will be left with cytoplasm okay so a protoplasm without a nucleus is called cytoplasm and from this cytoplasm if you remove if you remove the all the organelles that are present okay so if you remove cytoplasmic organelles if you remove cytoplasmic organelles then 
the remaining component will be called cytosol. Okay, so this is these are the few terms that you should remember that a cell without a cell wall is called a protoplast, and the living component of a cell is called protoplasm. And what is cytoplasm? It comprises of everything, everything without a nucleus. Okay, and if you have just a fluid, okay, so it will be just the fluid matrix, right? The fluid matrix that do not contain any organelles, then the that component will be called cytosol. Okay. Now, now we have seen that what are the typical components of a eukaryotic cell. Now we will study in detail about each of these structures. So the first structure that we will we are going to discuss in today's lecture is cell membrane. Okay. Now let's see what are the features, typical features of a cell membrane. So a cell membrane, if you remember, we have seen every structure that we have drawn. We have drawn a cell membrane, right? So the cell membrane is present. It is present in all types of cell. Okay, it is present in all types of cell. Right? Now, why why do you think that it should be present in all types of cell? Why anything will be present everywhere? Because it is absolute requirement, right? It is. This absolute requirement of all cells. Okay, if it will be unnecessary, then why why would it be present at a first place, right? So it is only present because it is a absolute requirement of all cells. Okay, so a plasma membrane or cell membrane is the absolute requirement of all cells. Now, if you talk about the structure. So these cell membrane, whether it's a prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic cell, the cell membrane are structurally similar. So a cell membrane are structurally similar in all cells. Okay. So a cell membrane is structurally similar in all cells, whether it's a prokaryotic cell, whether it's a prokaryotic cell or eukaryotic cell. Okay. So it is structurally similar in all kind of cell. Now, if we talk about structural, so it is asymmetric in nature. So cell membrane is asymmetric. It do not have symmetry. So it is asymmetric in it is asymmetric in nature, and it is flexible. Okay. So structure is flexible or elastic. So it's not very hard and tough. Structure is flexible or elastic. Okay, so a uh, typical features of uh, cell membrane is that it is present in all type of cell because it is the absolute requirement of all cells. And irrespective of a cell is a prokaryotic or a eukaryotic, it is present and is structurally similar in all cells. Okay, and these cell membranes are flexible or elastic in nature. Now, if you talk about the discovery of the cell membrane. So, as we know that the cells are very small entities, right? So, if you want to visualize a cell, you need a microscope. So, in earlier time, the microscope that was invented was light microscope. Okay. So, earlier time, the microscope that was invented was light microscope. So, if you visualize a cell inside a light microscope, you will see something like this. Okay. So you'll see, you will see a boundary, and this boundary was cell membrane. So in light microscope, you can see a cell membrane, but it will look just like a boundary. But if you want to study in more detail about the structure of a cell membrane, you will have to use an advanced microscope. Okay. So to study the detail, to study the detail structure of cell membrane. To study detailed structure of cell membrane, a special kind of microscope was required. Okay, so detailed structure of cell membrane, you need a special kind of microscope that is called electron microscope. So you will need electron microscope, and this electron microscope has have a range of nanometer. So these electron microscope have a range of nanometer. 
So they can see in the range of 10 to the power 9 minus 9 meters. Okay. So using an electron microscope, you can see a detailed structure of a cell membrane. However, a cell membrane can also be seen by a light microscope. But in that case, you will only see a boundary. Okay. Now, while this uh, electron microscope was being invented, scientists tried to visualize or to study the structure of the cell membrane. Okay. So the scientist tried to see the structure of this cell membrane and how they analyze this cell membrane. So the scientist analyzed cell membrane by using a method, okay, by using a method that was called chemical method, okay. So they analyzed cell membrane by breaking it, okay. So they broke the cell membrane using chemical method. Okay, using chemical method, they break the cell membrane. So suppose if this is a container, so break the cell membrane, something like this. Okay, to study the structure or, or st to study the chemical component of the cell membrane. So this analysis means chemical component. This means chem to study the chemical component of cell membrane. What did scientists do? They break the cell membrane using the chemical method. But in this case, what kind of cell they used? So the cell that they used was cell that they used was RBC, okay, or red blood cell. So they used for the first time when the scientists want to uh, analyze the chemical component of the cell membrane, they used a cell that was RBC. Now the question is why did they use RBC or the red blood cell? Because this RBC do not contain organelles, okay. RBC do not contain organelles, okay. Now you will ask that, so what difference does it make? So if you remember, I said that a cell has an outer boundary. It is made up of something, okay. It is made up of something. And they also, the cell also has internal components or subcompartments, right? And these subcompartments also have a membrane, either a single membrane or a double membrane. So at that time, the scientists were not knowing that what this membrane is made up of, whether this membrane is different from this membrane. Now we do know that these, mem these two membranes are made up of similar components, but at that time it was not known, okay? So in order to prevent the contamination, from these membranes, the scientist used only that cell that do not contain membrane at all. Okay. So if you, I'm repeating that the organelles also, also consist of membranes. So the organelles add outer membrane. This plasma membrane also have outer membrane and both of these membranes are made up of something, right? Today we know that both of these membranes are made up of similar material, but at that time it was not known. So if you want to analyze that what this outer membrane is made up of, it would be wiser to remove whatever component it has inside it, right? So in order to do this, they use a cell that do not contain any organelles. Okay. So did, why did the scientists use the RBC? Because it helped or it eased the analysis. It is the analysis because it does not contain any organelles. Okay. Okay. Fine. So they, the scientists took RBC and then they break it using the chemical method and then they analyze the components of the plasma membrane and what they found. So what they found that the plasma membrane comprises of three things. So predominant, uh, the plasma membrane predominantly comprises of two things. The first one is lipids. Okay. The plasma membrane of RBC comprises of lipid and these lipids are approximately 40%. Okay. The lipid. The second thing that it consists of was protein. Okay. And these proteins are 52%. And there were some other components such as Carbohydrates, etc. That is carbohydrates, etc. And these were 
Okay. So the plasma membrane or the cell membrane comprises of three components, lipids, proteins, and certain other components such as carbohydrates, cholesterols, etc. That was approximately 8%. Okay. So in slide, in this slide, what we saw, we saw that what are the typical features of a cell membrane and how did the discovery of cell membrane takes place. Now, we will study in detail about the structure of the cell membrane. So, if we talk about the structure of a cell membrane, so a cell membrane will look something like this. We all just saw. Okay. Now, it will look like a boundary. Now, if you zoom this boundary and visualize it under the microscope, you will see a structure something like this. Okay. You will see a structure something like this. So, so if you zoom, a plasma membrane. So you will see a structure something like this. Okay. What is this structure? This is lipid. These are the lipid moieties. Okay. These structures are the lipid moieties. So the structure is made up of lipid. And these lipids can you you can see that there are two layers, right? Hence we call that plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer. Okay. So a plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer. Now, if you zoom one lipid moiety, so it looks something like this, right? We can see that it has two components. The one component that is called head and the other component that is called tail. Okay. So a lipid bilayer plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer and a lipid moiety comprises of two things, a head and a tail. And this lipid is mainly phospholipid okay this lipid is mainly phospholipid okay so it is phospholipid now if we talk of phospholipid so this is the phospholipid this is the head region this is the head region now this head is phosphate group comprises of phosphate group the head comprises of phosphate group and this head is hydrophilic in nature. This is hydrophilic in nature. Okay. Now, what do you understand by hydrophilic? Hydrophilic means water loving. So, these are the groups or components that wants to interact with the water. Okay. So, the head part of a liquid wants to interact with the water. Because it is hydrophilic or water loving in nature. Now we have a different second component that is tail. We have another component that is tail. Now what this tail is made up of? It is made up of fatty acids. The tail is made up of fatty acid. And these are fatty acids are nothing but a long hydrocarbon chain with a carboxylic group in it. Okay. So these fatty acids are hydrophobic in nature. Okay, so these fatty, fatty acids are hydrophobic in nature. And what do you understand by hydrophobic? Hydrophobic means these are water repelling nature. These are of water repelling nature. It means they do not want to come in contact with water. Okay, they stay away from the water. So a phospholipid comprises of two regions, a head that is hydrophilic in nature. And the tail that is hydrophobic in nature. Now, if you see, you remember that I told that a cell, inside a cell, it comprises of water. Okay, right? It comprises of water and outside of the cell also, it comprises of water. So, a cell is present in the water and it also consists of water. So, these are mainly water molecules. Water, right? So, what arrangement? should a cell membrane make so that it can it can it can protect this tail region from coming in contact with the water so for this suppose you want to protect this tail region from coming in contact with the water you will make a draw a phospholipid now in order to protect this region what you will do you will make another word add another phospholipid right so now you can protect this this uh, tail 
from the water. But now these two tails are exposed, right? Again, if you want to protect these tails from the water, you will again make this kind of arrangement. But again, these another tail will come or be exposed, right? And these are in this something like this arrangement. Okay, these are in bilayer arrangement. But if you want to protect all the tails, what kind of arrangement you can make? You can make this circular, right? You can make the entire structure circular, right? So this this will comprise of this will look something like this, right? This will look something like this, right? So this will this circular structure will together form the plasma membrane. This will form plasma membrane in which the head region will be in contact with the water. This is out water outside it and this is water inside the cell, right? So the head region will be in contact with the water while the tail region will be protected from the water, right? So this is how, this is, if you talk about the plasma membrane, this is how a plasma membrane looks like. It has here something like this. This arrangement makes the plasma membrane in which the ta tails are embedded and while the heads are exposed to the water or to the outside of the cell, okay? So what we understood, we saw that the, what does a structure of a cell membrane look like? So a structure of a cell membrane comprises of a lipid bilayer, a lipid bilayer, and this lipid bilayer is mainly made up of phospholipid. And the phospholipid have two components, the head and the tail, which are arranged in a circular fashion in such a way that head is exposed outside and the tail remains embedded in this plasma membrane, right? So you can write the head is exposed outside and tail, the tail, it remains embedded, embedded in plasma membrane, right? So this is how a structure of a cell membrane looks like. Now we are, we are talking about phospholipid, right? So let's see in a little bit detail that how does a phospholipid look like and what are the constituents of a phospholipid. So I just told that this is phospholipid. This is reason is head. This reason is tail. Okay. Now, if you talk about what it comprises of, so a cell membrane basically comprises of certain components. One of this is this component. It looks something like this. Okay. So what is this? CH2OH, CHOH, CH2OH. It is glycerol. Okay. It is glycerol. So the structure of a cell membrane is made up of phospholipid. And this phospholipid comprises of, or it's made up of one of the component that is glycerol. And the second component is long hydrocarbon chain. Okay. Long hydrocarbon chain, which has a hydroxyl group, uh, uh, sorry, a carboxyl group attached to it. And what this is called, this is called, there will be two of it, okay? There will be two of it. And these are called fatty acids. And these structures are called fatty acids. So what are fatty acids? These are hydrocarbon chain, okay? These are hydrocarbon chains with carboxylic group. With carboxylic group. So these are fatty acids. Now, the carboxylic group of fatty acids form a bond with this, with one CH2OH of glycerol and with second CH2OH. And with the third, with third CH2OH comes an attached of phosphate group. Okay. Comes an attached of phosphate group. And these leads to a formation of a structure, something like this. This leads to a formation of structure, something like this. Okay. And this is nothing but your fatty acid, uh, lipid, phospholipid that we are talking about. So this structure forms something like this. And this is the structure of a, this is the structure of a phospholipid. So this together forms a phospholipid. Now you understood that what comprises of phospholipids. Okay. So if someone asks you about the, what are the components of a cell membrane? Or the phospholipid, what you can write, you can write it comprises of a glycerol or it is made up of glycerol, fatty acid and 
fossil. Okay. Now these are components of these are components of phospholipid. Phospholipid. Okay. Now second thing, what bond is what bond is this? This bond is called ester bond. This bond is called ester bond. Okay. So the bond that is present in a phospholipid is ester bond. Okay. So now we understood the structure of a cell membrane. So the structure of a cell membrane comprises of a phospholipid. And the phospholipid itself is made up of glycerol, fatty acid, and a phosphate by the formation of a ester bond. Okay. Now, now we have seen the structure. Now we have understood the structure. Now let's see the structure of a lipid. Uh, sorry, of a plasma membrane. So, if you saw see a typical structure of a plasma membrane, the membrane you can see that these are the heads that I was talking about, and these are hydrophobic tails. Okay. So here you can draw. So these are heads. These are hydrophobic tails, right? So this structure is the for phospholipid bilayer. This structure is phospholipid, which is bilayer. You can see, right? Apart from phospholipids, you can see that in the plasma membrane, there are certain other components that are present. Okay. So let's label that those components and then we will study in detail about these components. Okay. So you can see that there is one thing called integral protein. So the phospholip, uh, the plasma membrane also consists of integral proteins okay comprises of integral proteins now you can see there are certain other proteins that are present right something like this onto the surface and these are called peripheral proteins these are called peripheral proteins okay apart from peripheral proteins what else you can see you can see this yellow structures right these yellow structures what are these these are cholesterols these are cholesterols so the cholesterols these are also kind of lipid okay cholesterols are also kind of lipids but whether the cholesterol is present in all kind of cell membrane the answer is no so the cholesterol is only present this is only present in animal cell membrane okay cholesterol is only present in animal cell membrane right so the cholesterol is only present in animal cell membrane not in other cell membranes okay apart from this you can see there is one more structure right you can see there is one more structure something like this so what are these these are carbohydrates these are carbohydrates okay these are carbohydrates and these carbohydrates are attached onto the different components. And we will see what these carbohydrates or this complete structure will be called based on, on what other thing it is attached to. Okay. So you can, now you have seen the structure of a typical plasma membrane. What are the components of it? Now let's see. So the first component that you understood, right? And we also studied in detail that it consists of lipids and lipids can be of phospholipids. There are also other lipids, right? But mainly of phospholipids and it is also called lecithin. Okay. Lecithin and second is cholesterol. But cholesterol is only present in cholesterol is only present in. So we saw we saw that a plasma membrane consists of proteins, carbohydrates, and lipid for uh, lipid bilayer, right? And the lipid is made up of mainly phospholipids. Now, let's talk about the proteins. So, in plasma membrane, basically there are two types of proteins, okay? So, there is two types of protein that is present in a plasma membrane. And on what basis these proteins are divided? So, these are based on, these are based on ease of extraction, okay? Based on ease of extraction. Okay, so these these proteins are divided into two is based on the ease of extraction. Now, what do we do? I mean by ease of extraction, it means 
that how well or how easily these proteins can be extracted from the plasma membrane if you want to extract it how easily it can be extracted so for this so based on this there are two type of protein the first one is integral protein okay the first one is called integral protein so what are the integral protein these are the proteins that are embedded or or is buried in the plasma membrane so you can see here in the example right so this is a integral protein so what you can see that it is buried right so it is buried but this can be either completely buried or partially buried in the plasma membrane so integral protein can be completely can be completely or partially buried okay so the integral what are the integral proteins these are the proteins that can be completely or partially buried in plasma membrane so if you want to isolate these kind of proteins so for that purpose you will have to disrupt the complete membrane structure right you cannot easily remove this protein out of it right because it is completely or partially buried so because of this reason it is called the integral protein and if you talk about the example of a integral protein one of such example is transmembrane protein okay one of such example is transmembrane protein or huh? there are examples like channels okay so we suppose this is your plasma membrane so these proteins will be something like this so it will allow the molecules to pass through it but these are present throughout the membrane right so these transmembrane protein they run across the membrane okay they run across the membrane so these are the integral proteins now there is a second kind of protein that is called peripheral protein okay so what are peripheral proteins peripheral proteins are the one that has present at periphery right so they are present at the surface okay present at the surface of the plasma membrane right so if you have plasma membrane like this they will be present something like here here right so if you want to remove these proteins these proteins can be easily removed right so if you, you can say the integral protein are to remove are to remove okay but these peripheral proteins can be easily removed can be easily removed without without distorting without distorting or disrupt disrupting the plasma membrane so peripheral proteins can be easily removed without distorting or disrupting the plasma membrane okay and these are present where these are because they are present at the surface right now these are the things that we studied about the protein so if you remember we studied about the phospholipid we studied about the proteins now we were also saying that there is one more component that is present in the plasma membrane and that is carbohydrate right so but these carbohydrates are not just attached directly to the plasma membrane okay so these carbohydrates can be either in the form of a glycoprotein can so if you talk about carbohydrates we talk about carbohydrates so this can be in the form of glycoproteins so either glycoproteins or glycolipids okay so this can be either glycoproteins or glycolipids now what do you understand by glycoproteins so the glyco glycoproteins will be one in which this carbohydrate chain is attached attached onto the protein okay so the carbohydrate carbohydrate chain carbohydrate chain is attached to the is attached to the proteins okay the carbohydrate chains are attached to the proteins so these kind of structures are called glycoproteins now what are glycolipids in this case carbohydrates are attached in this case carbohydrates are attached onto lipids okay to the lipids so if a carbohydrate is attached to the protein it will be called glycoprotein and if it is attached to the lipid then it will be called glycolipids right so we saw the structure of a uh, plasma membrane what are the components 
and we studied briefly about these components right now next let's move to the models of the plasma membrane structure so with time different scientists gave different models of the plasma membrane so what do you mean by models model means how the lipids and proteins are arranged okay how lipids and proteins are arranged okay so different scientists gave their theory that how the lipids and proteins that are present in the plasma membrane are arranged so one of such model was given by daniel davison okay so daniel davison gave a model called sandwich model they gave a model called sandwich model and what was the sandwich model according to him it is a lipid that it consists of a lipid bilayer plasma plasma membrane comprises of lipid bilayer and this lipid bilayer are surrounded okay these lipid bilayers are surrounded by the protein molecules okay so these lipid molecules are surrounded so these are the protein molecules globular proteins okay so the lipid molecules are surrounded by these globular proteins so you can see that it is making a kind of sandwich right the proteins are outside and inside is a lipid bilayer so this model was called sandwich model then there came a second scientist and his name was robertson and this scientist came with another model and that model was called unit membrane model okay the model was called unit membrane model now what was the unit membrane model according to him again if it is a lipid bilayer he said that it is a lipid bilayer okay so this thing was common but in this case he said that the protein molecules float around this lipid bilayer okay so the lipid molecules flow uh, sorry the protein molecules float around this lipid bilayer and they call this a model as unit membrane model okay so this is protein this is protein okay similarly this is protein molecules so the robertson gave the unit membrane model so both of these models were rejected then came a third scientist whose name was singer and nicolson okay so the singer and nicolson gave fluid mosaic model okay and this is the most widely accepted model fluid mosaic model in 1972 okay so they gave the fluid mosaic model which is the most widely accepted model and according to this fluid mosaic model it means that the term fluid refers to the term fluid it refers to lipid okay so the term fluid refers to lipid and the mosaic here it means mosaic means proteins okay mosaic means proteins so what the singer and nicolson told they told that this plasma membrane is a semi fluid in nature why it is semi fluid because of the presence of a lipid moiety okay so the plasma membrane is membrane is semi fluid membrane is semi fluid and why it is semi fluid because of the presence of the lipid and because of this lipid it allowed the movement of the proteins okay because of this semi fluid nature the proteins that are present in the membrane it allow the movement of the proteins okay but how does this protein moves in the membrane they moves in the lateral movement lateral movement it allow allows lateral movement of proteins okay it allows lateral movement of proteins okay so membrane is semi fluid in which proteins move in a lateral movement okay and this ability this ability ability of movement of ability of lateral movement ability of lateral movement of protein is called fluidity okay this is called fluidity okay so this was the fluid mosaic model in which it was said that membrane is semi fluid in nature and which allows the lateral movement of the protein and this was this is also called that 
and because of this proteins are also called proteins are called iceberg okay proteins are called iceberg that float on sea of lipid that float on sea of lipid okay so this is what the singer and nicholson give the fluid mosaic model now in next class we will discuss about the now we have seen the structure of the plasma membrane in the next class we will see the what is the function of the plasma membrane okay that's all thank you